Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do a comparison between the two top selling Shark self empty robot vacuums. This is the one I've got. It's the model RV2502AE. It's the AI robot with artificial intelligence. It has LiDAR navigation. I'll be comparing it to the older one, the Shark IQ self empty robot. This is a model number RV101AE. So this one retails for 600 normally, but it's on sale for 424. I did find an open box on Amazon and I got it for around under $300, which was a good buy. So you may be asking, which model should I get? This one's a nice model. And if I can get it for under $300, that's a decent price. I do like the other one better. And I'll tell you why. It all comes down to boundary strips. So in order to keep this thing away from certain rooms and stuff, you've got to use these boundary strips. It's like a little magnetic strip, but I found that unless you really uh, put some two-sided tape down and really hold them down, it really moves them when it comes up to them. And I have had an instance where it goes, goes over them. So what it comes down to is how often do you have to go find your vacuum? How often does it get stuck somewhere? You get a notification, oh, it's stuck. I've had to, so I've, I've cleaned the same house for over a week now with both vacuum cleaners. I've had to go find this one probably 10 to 15 times, I've never had to go find the other one. I did buy the $99 uh, Black Friday Anchor Eufy one. You know, it's just not worth it. It has to bump into something to turn around and it doesn't do a very good job. I had to go find this one all the time. It was constantly getting stuck and I'd have to go find it. Okay, so let's take a look at the two sharks real quick. This is the older one. This is the newer one. There's a laser that's turning in there. So this is a little more fragile. There's in, underneath this, uh, there is something turning and you can kind of hear it turning. So this one is a louder one than the older one. And it's taller. This one does really good going under furniture. This one, not so much. It doesn't like to go under furniture and a lot of times it can't because it's too high. So where they keep the waste or the stuff it sucks up, these look identical. One thing I like about the old one, it has a dedicated power switch. So you can walk up to it and turn it off. This one does not have a dedicated power switch. You got to hold the clean button for five seconds and it can be a little tricky getting it turned off. Um, so I would rather have a dedicated power switch. Okay, so here I've got the new one and the old one. It looks like this cleaning area is five and a half, five and a half. Yeah, so it looks like this, the same opening a little bit different brush. I have not had any problems with these brushes on either one or the wheels or these. I love these sweepers. They, they both rotate at the same kind of constant speed. Both have the same drive wheel. Interesting enough, they both take the exact same battery. Um, you can see this one is quite a bit taller and it is wider too, not by very much, but just a little bit wider. They both have the edge sensors that look exactly the same, so it won't fall off stairs. And they both got that look like a bump. They have a bumper on the front. It acts about the same, but again, it's got these sensors. So they call them the fall off sensors, so it won't fall off some stairs. They both have very basic. You can walk up to it, hit the clean button or the dock. Same with this clean dock. This is a sensor you got to keep clean on this one. It doesn't have anything up above. So this, the newer one doesn't bump into furniture as much because of the sensor. It, it still uses the bumper some, but it will sense something and, and start turning. This one only uses, it has to rely on the bumper. But interestingly enough, they both have about the same scrape marks on them. They've both been using, I've been using them for a week in the exact same house on each one of them. Here we have the new one. I like this base. It's a little bit of a bigger base station. It looks a little nicer. You've got some indications here. So all that indication is, is that it's plugged in and it's got power. When your unit's charging, you'll get a charging. And when the, the vacuum is running, there's a light that comes on here. So those are kind of nice. It'd be nice if it had buttons to tell it what to do. The trash bin, you know, it's about the same. I don't notice any difference in loudness and they both have kind of the same filter, like a HEPA filter. So I, I thought one claimed to be more of a HEPA filter than the other, but I think they're exactly the same as far as HEPA filter wise. They're both bagless. So you, they got a window that you can see how much dirt it's collected. Okay, so this is the newer one. 
it does it does have a nicer one because there's not a cone in here. So all the hair, which these things pick up a lot of hair, it doesn't stick. The other one, the older one's got a cone, and I'll show you it. All the hair sticks to it, and you're constantly having to go up there with your hand. This one, when I empty it, all the hair falls out. So I don't I don't find myself going up there cleaning that cone. So this one takes up a little bit smaller footprint. It does come with this plastic that you can put on carpet, but I found that I don't I don't have to use that on the other one. This one, you just press a button, you take this whole assembly. Again, they both have that kind of that same type of filter. Okay, so here's the older one. Here's what I was telling you about. See all that hair, that cone? Now this does a really good job as far as cleaning out the vacuum. And once you get one that cleans out a vacuum, it seems like that's what all I want now. Um, you do have to kind of get up here and get that hairball off of the cone. So they fixed that with the newer one. So on the older one, I do... I do find the beeps are a lot louder. It kind of plays that tune, you know, it's a lot louder. I've got them both. You can turn the volume up in the app. I've got them both turned all the way up, but this one's definitely louder. So you can just come up here and press the, uh, the clean button. Now this one is a methodical cleaner. We like that it leaves lines. It's not a strictly bump and kind of go all different directions. I really like that about that, about this one. And same with the other one. But one thing with this one is when it got far away and you tell it to go dock, it doesn't go straight to the dock. It kind of like bumps around a lot. It eventually, eventually gets to the dock, but the other one goes straight to the dock. Like it knows exactly where it's at. Here we are back to the newer one, the charging lights on. I can just come up here and hit the clean button. See how that's a lot lower. And the machine is a lot louder. Not, not a lot louder. Again, this newer one is methodical too. It goes back and forth. So it will clean and leave the lines, which looks really nice. It lets you know that the room is nice and clean. I press the dock button. See how it goes? It, goes, it just knows right where to go when it docks. Um, now, does this one pick up more than the other one? I do think it does pick up a little bit more. I did some tests. I'm not an expert on these by no means. I do, I do think they both pick up a lot of hair and dirt very well. They both have the same docking procedure where they pull forward and then they reverse. And then the best sound is when the vacuum kicks on and cleans out your shark. That's, we love hearing that sound. With this newer one, I don't have to use boundary strips. I can have dedicated no-go zones in the app. Okay, for the next part of the video, uh, the majority of the changes are in the app. You use the same app for, for both uh, vacuums, and I've got both of them selected up here. This is the new one. It's called the new shark upstairs, and then I can click the little arrow, and I can go to the shark downstairs. Now, the page looks different. You use the same app, but it looks different, and it's got different functions. Here's the home screen on the old. You do have a map. You've got a clean and a schedule. Those are the same, but there's a lot of differences in the map. So let's click on the map. The new one really shines when it creates a map. Now this one made a very good map. I was very impressed. It does not have a dedicated go map my house. The other one's got a thing you can say, um, go search my house and create a map. It's got a dedicated thing and I'll show you that. So the old one created, I can edit it. It mapped my house and then I can create rooms. Now these rooms have to be perfectly square or rectangles. I can't make zigzaggy rooms. In the other one, I can put a 90 degree corner here. It's a little tricky. By, by merging rooms, I can create different patterns. This one is strictly whatever this is. Okay. And the other one, I can create zones. So the map is very limited. I can just create rooms on this. Now I can pick which room I want to clean, which is nice. I can label the rooms and all of that. And I can delete this map and it'll remap. When you delete the whole map, then it remaps while it's cleaning. So what was confusing is, so the home screen on the old one, you see the picture of the shark. On the new one, you don't see that, but we can press the clean button. It says, do you want to do the entire house? You can do, you can pick rooms. You can hit start cleaning. It tells you how much time. 
So here, this is, it tells you how long it's been cleaning, what your battery life is. I like that. It, that's a really nice notification. I can tell it, go to the dock. I can hit find my robot and I can change the, the speed or the, how much suction power it has. It's got eco, normal, and max. They both have that. And it kind of gives me a, it says it's cleaning and I got 100% charge. And I can just pause it right there if I want. So let's go to the new shark upstairs and we'll look at it, its homepage. Now it looks different. It starts with the map. I thought this, this was confusing at first, but I get it now. I, I, I kind of wanted to see a picture of the vacuum and kind of go from there, but this is the home screen on the new shark. Now you can hit the word clean and you can say start cleaning. Here's my eco normal, but here's the map is the rooms. I got zones and I can do a spot. I cannot do this with the old one. I can tell it, Hey, in the kitchen, the kids dropped a bunch of crumbs. I can give it this little, this little spot here and I hit ultra clean. It'll go right to that spot and do a clean. That's pretty cool. So here I am on the new shark AI robot under its map under when I'm editing the map, I can hit re explore. You, you want to do this when you first get this one. It doesn't explore. It, you, you, you just sit back, let it explore your house, and it creates a really good map. I really like that feature. The other one does a good job, too. It just takes a lot longer because it does it while it's cleaning. So now you click on Edit Map. Here's my rooms. So see how that room, I've got a 90-degree like angle in it. And same with the dining room, the kitchen. So what allows me to create those angles is I can merge rooms. So you have to start off making the rooms a square or a rectangle. You can't change that. But once you merge the rooms, then it will make that little cutout in it. Then I can also add zones. So I can add a no-go zone and a high traffic zone. So my high traffic zone is like from the door to the hallway, kind of where our shoes are and everything. That's pretty nice because then I can just tell it, hey, hit the high, hit the high traffic zone and it'll just do that area. But the nicest feature I like is under zones is the no-go zones. So click on no-go zones. I had to add, so I've got some chairs that are really low to the ground and the, all the vacuums have had, I got three of them. All of them had trouble with it. The bumper wouldn't hit it to turn it around, so it kind of rolled around all on it. But I created, and it sees those chairs right there. I created a no-go zone, so it stays away from those chairs. I don't have to use a boundary strip. I don't have to do anything other than add that no-go zone. Now it stays away from that area. I really like that feature. And as far as the actual map of my house, I think both of them did a really good job. This one it does seem to pick up more of the stuff, the obstacles that, so you can say, oh yeah, that I know that obstacle, stay away from that obstacle. Okay, so let's start this one cleaning. Let's hit, let's tell it to clean a certain room. I wanna show you this. So let's go clean. I like, and it's got this ultra clean, more suction and it does two passes. I really like that. Let's do, let's do the fan, it's the farthest away. So deselect, let's go just do the family room, ultra clean, start cleaning. Okay, so it took itself off the dock and it makes a beeline right for that room. I mean, it's kind of cool watching your vacuum kind of go to another room. And it doesn't have to bump off of everything to get there. It kind of knows the path. Okay, so it got to the room, now it's going to start the cleaning. So it doesn't always have to bump into whatever it to turn around. When it sees furniture sometimes it doesn't have to bump into it. See it didn't bump into that. The laser on the top sensed it and turned around. But when it sees the register it actually has to bump into the register to turn around. So the, the newer one also makes like a rattle, I wanted to call it at first. It was kind of like a rattle. There's also a sound of the thing turning on top. I can hear that. But the brush sounds like it's rattling a little bit. 
where I don't hear that on the new on the old one. Now I did some tests. This thing still has trouble with cords, even though it's got the lasers on the front. If there are cords or the kids leave a little Lego or something on the on the ground, it's definitely gonna hit those. So let's say I leave my slipper out. So it, it sensed the slipper and went around it. That's pretty cool. The other one wouldn't do that. It would push that slipper till the bumper went off. So again, this is the new one. While it's working, I can hit go to dock. I can hit find my robot. I can hit pause. And I can change the speed. I can tell I want it to do max. Where it really kicks on the high gear on that. So under settings, I've got the new shark and the old shark. The new shark has a few more extra settings. I don't, it's got extended clean time. So I can turn this, so if it's got, if it's got leftover battery, it'll do some more cleaning until it uses up the battery. The old one does not have that feature. And I can set a cleaning preference. So I can hit cleaning preference and the speed is normal. On the new one, this is, I, I've got this on the new one. On the old one, I don't have it. So creating the schedule looks like exactly the same for both of them. I can create schedules to when it does certain cleanings other than I can pick more of a, a specific area with the newer one. So mine came down to how often do I have to go find the robot, get it back on the base station and make it start working again. This one, I haven't had to go find at all. So don't get me wrong, the, the older one does a great job cleaning. I just have to go, it just, once you, you figure out where it gets stuck, then you kind of learn, okay, I need to put a block there, a box there. So you'll figure out where it gets stuck a lot and you'll help prevent it. But it does an excellent job cleaning and I, and I love the self-emptying feature of it. So here's a spot it had, it had really trouble. It would go underneath the treadmill. So I had to put a boundary strip to keep it away from the treadmill. Whereas on the other one, I could create a no-go zone. It would sense this when it mapped it and I would say stay away from it. But I don't want to sell this one short. It does an excellent job cleaning. The other one, you are going to pay a little bit more for the intelligence, which I do like the more intelligence because then I don't have to use the boundary strips and I haven't had to go find the new one. And see, I hit the dock on this one. It doesn't know exactly where it's at. It, it, it kind of bumps around to kind of find the dock. Okay, so it just took, the, looks like it's just taken the long way around. So it does sort of know where the dock is at. It should turn. No, not turn. The other one, the new one would have just made that turn right into the dock. And again, back to the these, the ones that just bump. You know, if you've got a very dedicated space, um, they work great. You've got to empty the thing yourself. Um, they are cheaper, but I, I just had to go for this thing. Struggled with a lot of stuff that we have that the newer ones are not struggling with. So thanks everybody for watching. If you could, please like and subscribe.